Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Thank you for all the prayers about the hurricane thingy. Today is October 10th, 2024. Successfully got through Hurricane Milton. And uh, yeah, it was just some wind. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we were pretty far away from the storm, half a state away. So, yeah, hardly got any rain. So, all right, this is going to be a continuation of Armies of the Lord. Uh, the part one that I did yesterday was uh, of the human aspect. This is more of the angelic aspect. So, turn your King James Bible to Revelation chapter 12, and uh, we're going to go on a couple of rabbit trails, I guess you could say, rabbit holes. So, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. This woman is not clothed in darkness. She's clothed in light. And the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And I've had people tell me, oh, I don't understand the book of Revelation because it's just full of so much symbolism. Well, if you had bothered to read the entire Bible, uh, guess what? You would understand because this symbolism comes from the Old Testament. Let's take a look. So where does the sun and the moon and 12 stars come from? Well, if you had never read the entire Bible, you would not know the symbolism. So turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 37. We're going to read about Jacob, whose name was changed by the Lord to Israel, and about his 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 1, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Now, why was the land called Canaan? Because Noah's son, Ham, had a kid, probably a bastard of the fallen angel kind, who went to the promised land and occupied it before Israel got there. And then there was a, a war between the children of Ham and the children of Shem. That's where you get the word Semite, Shemite. So there's a spiritual aspect to all this. But uh, <laughs> most people want to believe that uh, Genesis chapter 6 is just a, you know, when they talk about giants, oh, well, this guy was six foot tall and everybody else was four foot and a half or five foot tall. And so they called him a giant. And they want you to think he was normal. No, these giants were 12, 13 foot tall at least. So they were, they were giants. You know, uh, Israel was not a bunch of midgets. All right, verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, one of his children, being 17 years old, it was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel, remember, Jacob had his name changed by the Lord 
to Israel. So when you see Jacob or Israel, either one, it's interchangeable. Uh, you may not know it, but Israel means rules with God or prince with God. Israel. When you see that word E-L, well, when you see E-L, uh, it has reference to God. Uh, I did a Bible study on that. Ishmael, Elijah, E-L-I, Eli, E-L-I. Uh, so, you know, Ezekiel, E-L. Uh, Emmanuel. All those words have E-L, and they all have reference. Uh, Michael, the archangel, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. He's called a prince of God. So, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Now remember, Israel had four uh, kids by four different women. You know, if you... If you have two wives, you got double trouble, right? So if you got four of them, oh boy. Double trouble times two. That's double, double trouble, right? Uh, Bible teaches a, a bishop should be the husband of one uh, one wife. Yeah, I could, I could have barely handled one. I couldn't imagine two or four of them. Oh, well. Verse four. And when his brethren, his brothers, saw that their father loved him, Joseph, more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. It's called family jealousy, right? And boy, if you want to see jealousy, get dogs. Yeah. Boy, you start playing with one, the other one's going to be like, hey, you're not paying attention to me. Yeah, I've seen that so many times. Oh, boy. Verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. What are sheaves? Uh, the When you... Uh, have you ever heard the song in church? Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Oh, I can't remember how it goes. Boy, it's been over, it's probably been, yeah, 55 years since I've heard that song. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Well, wheat, and God's people are likened unto wheat sometimes. You cut the wheat down and you call it sheaves. And then they have to take the sheaves and shake the wheat kernels off of it. Sort of like what they do with rice, I guess. So I don't know. I've never been a farmer. I've never grown wheat. Just what I've read. So Joseph says, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. What is obeisance? Well, it comes, the root word for the word obey comes from the word obeisance. O-B-E. And it means to bow down. Obeisance, to obey. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? R-E-I-G-N. Not water falling from the sky. No, ruling and reigning. So they're asking him, Are you going to be our rulers? Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? What is dominion? That's where you get the word dominate. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams 
and for his words. Now here's where Revelation 12, the sun, the moon, and the stars comes in. Verse 9. Revelation, I'm sorry, Genesis 37, verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Huh. So his father is the sun, his mother is the moon, and Joseph and his eleven brethren are the twelve stars. Think about it. Verse 11. And his brother envied him, but his father observed the saying. Now, do you remember the story of Joseph in England, uh, Egypt? Yeah, he became, what, the second or third ruler in Egypt? After Pharaoh? And Israel left the land of Canaan and they had to go to Egypt because that's where they had food during the famine? Oh, I've never read that story. Well, Whose fault is that? You know, people have died to get this Bible into our hands, in our language. And a majority of churchgoers won't even bother to read it. Because if they did, things would be different. Pastors would not be able to ply their lies like they do. I mean, people would, people would confront the pastors and say, hey, you're lying. But because they're ignorant, they lack knowledge of the Bible, they, they can get away with it. So, so uh, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. They, so, he was sold into Egypt. He became, uh, eventually went from prison to a ruler under Job, Pharaoh. And, uh, you know, a lot of my role models went to prison. Yeah, Joseph and Paul and Peter. Matter of fact, wasn't Jesus uh, arrested and uh, he didn't make it to prison? But, uh, yeah, the incident death penalty. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. Since we covered that. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Uh, some people say this woman is technically could be Eve, or Mary, or, um, yeah, you know, so, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse 2. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Uh, we're going to take a look at horns right now. What is this about horns? I mean, I could make this my uh, its own Bible study, horns, but uh, I'm going to mention it here. Horns were used well, the Lord gave animals horns for protection. Horns were used to blow like a trumpet in war by Israel. Matter of fact, um, 
during the Indian Wars, didn't they use to blow horns? Oh, yeah. Horns were used to anoint kings with oil, olive oil, which was kind of a representation of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to cover all that. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. Joshua 6, 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, a blast, you know, it's, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, so they would sound a horn and they use that for a trumpet. All the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before them. Now this is talking about the uh, taking of, of um, oh boy, I just drew a blank. Jericho, Jericho. All the men were of the city of Jericho were on the walls. And they were waiting for Israel to try to get through the walls. But they went around the walls a number of times. I think it was eight times. And they blew the horn. And they shouted with a great shout. shout and the walls of the city fell down flat. So all the men, the army, that was on the walls of the city protecting the city against Israel, well, you fall down from a high wall, and guess what? You're not going to be, if you live, you're still not going to be in any condition to fight. So basically, uh, all they Israel had to do was go in and take the city from the Canaanites. So... Jericho. Yep. Let's go to 1 Samuel 2 and verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, if I remember correctly, Hannah was the mother, if I remember correctly, she was the mother of a prophet. I think it was Samuel. I'm not sure. She was barren and she made a deal with the Lord that if he ha she had a child, she would dedicate him to the Lord. And Samuel was the prophet for King David. If I remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. Hannah had a horn? Obviously, this is a figure of speech. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Let's skip down to verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. When the Lord brings his armies out of heaven, it's going to be like thunder. And no, it's not going to be Thor, the god of thunder. No. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king. Who's going to be the king? Christ. Christ Jesus. And exalt the horn of his anointed. Wow, I like this. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? See, Saul, uh, King Saul was the first king of Israel. He was a Benjamite. But he, the problem is, when he be, before he was king, he was humble before the Lord. After he became king, 
he decided he was going to lift himself up. And he did some things that didn't please the Lord. And uh, God rejected him. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Uh, Jesse was the father of David, who was of Bethlehem. Uh, king David was from Bethlehem. Where was Christ born? Bethlehem. You know, I don't know why churchgoers, I shudder to call them Christians, why they don't bother reading the Old Testament. Because they were taught, well, you know, the Old Testament, that's the book of the you-know-whos. Well, that doesn't belong to us. So we're New Testament Christians. Wrong. This entire book from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 is our book. And the Old Testament is explained by the New Testament. And the New Testament is explained by the Old Testament. It's a book. You know, you don't buy a mystery novel and then read the last chapter and think you know what's going on. Not going to happen. And the book, the Bible is a book of law. It's a book of salvation. It's a book of rejoicing. It's a book of mysteries. Mysteries, people. Because God, God hides things in the Bible and he wants us to seek them out. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel 16 and verse, let's skip down to 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. In 2 Samuel 22, verse 3, the God of my rock, and I think the rock is going to be my next Bible study, but we will see. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. Oh, absolutely. Doesn't the Bible say that, uh, let's see, let's take a look. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 6. You know, it kills me, literally almost, that people deny Paul as an apostle. When I hear people deny Paul as an apostle, I know that I'm either interacting with the devil or somebody who has fallen for the devil's wiles. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Remember Roadrunner? The wily coyote? Oh yeah, wiles of the devil. He's a trickster. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I mean, we do wrestle against flesh and blood, but there's we're wrestling against not, not just on earth, but against heavenly things. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah, think about that next election time, people. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You ever heard of taking a stand? Oh yeah. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, 
and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What does your breastplate cover? Your heart. You should have righteousness in your heart. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We should try to walk in peace, right? Above all, taking the shield of faith, the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So our faith is what shields us from the fiery darts of the devil and his followers and children. And take the helmet of salvation. What does the helmet cover? Your brain, your mind, your head. Your mind, what do you think? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Remember yesterday when I did Armies of the Lord and it said that Jesus would have a sharp sword coming out of his mouth? And the Jehovah's Witnesses will have a picture of this guy clothed in a white thing and there's a sword coming out of his mouth. No. No. The words of Christ is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. Period. A lot of symbolism in the Bible. All right, let's go back. And by the way, I did a Bible study on the uh, on this whole armor of God thing. But I basically gave you the cliff notes. So, Second Samuel twenty two three: The God of my rock, in Him I will trust. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation. My high tower. What is a high tower for? So that you can look a far way off and see the enemy coming. Also, uh, you ever heard, you when you're in the military, you want to take the high ground? Think about it. When you were in a high tower shooting arrows down at the enemy, your arrows are not going to lose any uh power. But when an enemy is shooting up at you, the arrows are fighting against gravity. They're going to lose power. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge. My salvation. I'm sorry, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. First Kings chapter one of verse 39. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet and all the people said, God save King Solomon. God save the king. Uh, where did England get that from, I wonder? Hmm. Psalms 18.2 The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Wow. Psalms 89.24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. Psalms 112, 112 verse 9. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever, his horn shall be exalted with honor. So sometimes horn has reference to government. 
Psalms 132, 17. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp to mine anointed. Psalms 148, 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, speaking of God, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. Jeremiah 48, 25, here is judgment. The horn of Moab is cut off. God didn't like Moab. And his arm is broken, saith the Lord. Lamentations 2, 3, Jeremiah wrote this because he was lamenting what had happened to Israel. Because they were under judgment for their wickedness and the God had had enough and gave them into the hands of their enemies, the Babylonians. He hath, uh, limitations 2 3, he hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy, he and he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. Hmm. Ezekiel 29, verse 21. In that day I will cause the horn of the house of Israel to bud forth. I will give thee the opening of the mouth in the midst of them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All right, we're going to close out the horn with uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father, Zacharias, now remember, Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist. Jesus said, of all those born of women, there was not a greater than John the Baptist. Not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. So... And John the Baptist would probably be kicked out of 90-something percent of the churches today. Uh, dressed in goat skins and animal skins and preaching repentance, calling people a generation of vipers. Oh, he, he would, trust me, he would not be uh, well-received. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up an horn of salvation, a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. What is the horn of salvation? Christ. Christ is absolutely the horn of salvation. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And oh, by the way, um, when Israel was to go to war, they blew the horn. Back in the old days, when uh, during the American Indian Wars, they would blow the horn for when to attack, when to regroup, when to retreat. And... Uh, where did they get that idea from? Hmm, I wonder. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, there are... Uh, maybe we should do the stars thing 
real quick. All right, what are stars? Um, sometimes there are lights up in the sky at night. Other times they are Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. What do candlesticks do? They You put candles on them and you light them. What do candles give off? Light. The church was supposed to be the one that gives the light of Christ off. But uh, I don't think they're doing that anymore, but that's just my opinion. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So when this dragon drew a third part of the stars, verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be devoured for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Well, you could say this is Cain killing Abel. Or when King Herod tried to kill Christ when he was a child born from Mary, when he slew all the children in Bethlehem. Verse 5. And she, obviously Mary, Mary and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness. People, this ties right into Matthew 24. Right into it. I have done an entire playlist on Matthew 24, and I did Matthew, uh, Revelation chapter 12 also, if I remember correctly. It's kind of hard to remember. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a thousand Bible studies or two thousand. I, I don't know. But uh, I used to be able to do two, three, four Bible studies a week, but uh, since I've been working, I just don't have time anymore, it seems like. Plus, there's a lot of words I can't say on uh, certain platforms because those videos get deleted. Thank you, uh, Google. Appreciate it. Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. This is about three and a half years, 42 months. Oh yeah. All right. Now, when we read about the woman who fled into the wilderness in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6, the woman is the church, the bride of Christ. And, uh, of course, the demon nominational preachers will say, no, 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 that's the you-know-who's over in the Middle East that are, by definition, antichrists. Uh, yeah. What is an antichrist? Hmm, let's take a look at that. Antichrist. What is the Bible definition of an Antichrist? First John chapter 2 and verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, or the Messiah, if you want to call that. He is Antichrist. 
that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. Contrary to what the demon nominational preachers say, well, you know, the you-know-whos, they, they don't have the Son, but, but they got an everlasting covenant with the Father. Says who? The devil? You deny the Son, you don't have the Father either. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. And I acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, the Horn of Salvation. I acknowledge that. He is God in the flesh. All right, so let's go to Matthew chapter 24 which ties into Revelation chapter 12, big time. Uh, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Now, this temple is the temple that Herod took over. When Rome... Uh, well, let's go back a little bit. Alexander the Great, they call him. He was from Macedonia, which was basically Greece. I mean, they're Greeks. They speak Greek. And he unified Greece. And he conquered basically all the way from parts of India all through the Middle East. I mean, he conquered the whole area. Uh, the land of Israel was conquered by Alexander. And he held it. they held it for, I don't know, a couple hundred years. So... When you're conquered by a, a group of people, you're going to learn their language. Yeah. That's why when you go to Miami, you don't speak Spanish. You're, uh, you're out of luck, buddy. Uh, so, Greek was the language of commerce. Very common. That's why the Bible was written in Greek, the New Testament, anyways. Maybe not the Old, no, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic, which is kind of a dialect of Hebrew. But the New Testament was written in Greek. I believe the entire thing. They'll, they'll lie to you and tell you Matthew was written in Greek or uh, Hebrew and then translated into Greek. Well, actually mistranslated into the Greek. I don't believe that, but you believe whatever you want. So, Greece had conquered. When Alexander died, his four generals divvied up the kingdom. And then Rome came along years later, probably a couple of centuries later, um, and conquered the area. Now, Rome respected Greece greatly, and they never really completely conquered Greece. And uh, you read about the Scythians, too. Uh, so, when Rome took over the land of Israel, they appointed Pontius Pilate and King Herod to administer the area and King Herod had taxed the people and expanded and built the temple oh well, I don't know if he built it but he he added upon it and it was beautiful from what I understand you can read about it with the historian Josephus who was likely of the tribe of Judah and uh historian working for the Romans and he even wrote about Jesus I had that book once but it was stolen from me so works of Josephus very thick all right so in Matthew 24 verse 1 and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple oh yeah hey Jesus look at all these beautiful buildings Verse 2. 
And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now you got a choice here. Do you believe the Bible and Jesus where he said not one stone upon the temple would be left upon another? Or do you want to believe the you-know-whos where they say the wailing wall was part of the temple? Because those stones were not thrown down one upon another. I'm going to believe Jesus, but if you want to believe the wailing wall was part of the temple and Jesus is a liar, well, that's up to you. And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The end of this evil world. See, the modern church world says, Oh, the pre-trib rapture, there's not going to be any signs. Just Jesus is going to appear one day and fly away to heaven while the rest of the earth goes to hell for seven years or three and a half years or whatever, you know, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, whatever. I, you know, they could argue all they want. But my Bible says, the disciples have asked him, what would be the sign of your coming? You know, when you're driving on the interstate and you're going to a town or a city and it says exit 41, town of whatever, or city, you know, city exit, that's a sign. Oh, hey, uh, we're here. We got to get off this exit. Boom. There's going to be signs when Christ gets ready to return. And we're going to read about that. Verse 4. Matthew 24, 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed. Take heed. Pay attention, people. Take heed that no man deceive you. Good advice. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. Uh, World War One, World War Two, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Divers meaning diverse, many. Verse 8. All these are the beginning. This is just the introduction. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they, the they's, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Who killed the apostles? Who killed Jesus? If you say Rome, you're wrong. Unless, of course, you want to write your own Bible. It wasn't Rome. At least that's not what my King James says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Do you know there's a certain group of religious people that want to put a warning sticker on all Bibles, especially the New Testament, that says that they are anti-you-know-what? Yeah. They do. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended. Why are they offended? Because... They're going to be afflicted and killed and hated. They have almost no faith at all. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. Why? Because they love the world more than they love the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, that means grows, the love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
You ever heard of once saved, always saved and uh, eternal security? Oh, well, I said a little sinner's prayer for 30 seconds. So I'm going to be saved forever, no matter what I do. I don't think so. Jesus said you had to endure unto the end. And the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. What is this abomination of desolation? Well, I think it's two things. One, the Antichrist, the you-know-whos, performing animal sacrifices as a denial of what Jesus did on the cross, and the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, standing in the temple that gets rebuilt. Yeah, they're ready to rebuild the temple, people. He's going to stand in the temple and proclaim that he is God. I got a playlist on this. It's called End Times Education. When you see the man of sin and the son, son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, in the temple saying, I am God, this is what the Lord Jesus tells you to do. Verse 16. Matthew 24, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Run. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Nope. Get in, go to the mountains. Run. Don't go back home and say, oh, I got to pack my bags. Uh-uh. Because the enemy is going to be waiting for you at home to take you and to kill you. Verse 19. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Let me tell you something, people. I think the Lord, when he calls his people to the wilderness, and that nixes the preterb rapture lie, it's going to be like in the days when the Passover, when the Israel was in the wilderness after they left Egypt and God gave them manna. I think that's coming. I really do. I could be wrong. And I've had some dreams, but I don't like, I don't know if they're from the Lord or just an overactive imagination, but it's not going to be pretty, people. It's not. And uh, the Lord is not showing me what I'm going to be doing when all this happens. Maybe I'll die of old age. Maybe I'll be killed. Maybe I'll be dead by tomorrow. I don't know. The Lord numbers our days. Maybe I'll be in the wilderness. Maybe I'll be beheaded for Christ under the Noahide laws. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look it up. Worshiping Jesus Christ as God is considered blasphemy. Penalty, death. Method of execution, beheading. Yeah. Verse 21. For then shall there be great tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble. Great trouble. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Remember, people, the man of sin, the Antichrist, the beast, the son of perdition, comes first before Christ does. Unless you believe in the pre-trib rapture, then it's 
the opposite of what Christ teaches. No. No. Christ says the man of sin comes first. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall so show great signs and wonders. Miracles, people! He's going to show miracles! Insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. This is a warning, people. Verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Antichrist, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. When the Lord comes in glory, it's going to light up the whole sky, people. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. What carcass? All the dead, all the dead wicked. And the fowls of the air are going to feed on their flesh. And that's in the book of Revelation. Verse 29. Oh, uh, hey guys, you were wanting to know the signs of my coming? Well, here you go. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the star shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, north, east, south, west. Four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Uh, verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now, the fig tree is a symbol of Judah. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, there's no fruit on this fig tree. Remember that. Just leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. Unless, of course, you want to believe uh, people that tell you, well, you know, the Bibles are all mistranslated. You know, in the original manuscripts, everything was okay, but, you know, we, we lost everything. They they're telling you that Jesus is a liar right here. Jesus says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass pass away. Verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Sorry, Harold Camping. Harold Camping predicted the Lord's return like three or four times. They should have stoned him to death like it says to do, because if you're a false prophet, Bible says to stone that false prophet to death. Oh, and by the way, the Jehovah's Witnesses did the same thing around uh, 73. Yeah. Well, the Lord's coming back by 1975-76. He's coming back. And he's going to make the Jehovah's Witnesses his, uh, his earthly king uh, government on earth. Uh, wrong. We're still here, buddy. So, and, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses will lie and say, well, we really didn't mean that. Well, you clearly taught that because... I had a buddy of mine that was uh, a member of them, and he kept warning me, oh, the world's going to end. you got to join the Jehovah's Witnesses if you want to be saved. 
Uh, I didn't. So, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven. Even the angels don't know what day Christ is going to return, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who was taken away? The wicked were. They were taken away in the flood. They were drowned. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. In the days of Noah, who was taken and who was left behind? The wicked were taken and Noah and his family were left behind. But the pre-tribbers will lie and tell you, oh, it's the other way around. We're going to be taken away in the pre-trib rapture. And all the wicked are going to be left behind. Verse 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore. Watch for what? The signs. Watch, therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see. We may as well read the rest of the chapter. Matthew 24, 43. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. When the Lord comes, is he going to find you doing his work? Or is he going to find you sleeping? Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, because he's going to be in hell. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12 and uh, verse 6. Uh, before we go to Revelation, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 because this ties into uh, what I'm trying to convey. Uh, Paul, this is Paul. Uh, you know, and, and people will try to con you, convince you into thinking, oh, Paul's not a true apostle. No, uh, uh You know, the book of Acts, you have to de decide for yourself. Is the book of Acts belong in the Bible or is it wrong? Because the book of Acts records the conversion of Saul of Tarsus to Paul the Apostle, who was called by Christ himself. Take your pick. So, is the book of Acts wrong for the last, oh, I don't know, 1900 years? 2,000 years? I don't think so. But deceivers or those who are deceived will say otherwise. All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. This is talking about Christ's second coming. Okay, plain and simple. Verse 2, this is leading up to the events leading up to Christ returning. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, 
neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Didn't Christ say, be not deceived? For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Perdition means to fall. There was only one other person called the son of perdition in the Bible, and that was Judas Iscariot. The man of sin, the Antichrist. The book of Revelation calls him the beast. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin, verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Hmm. See, he's going to want worship. And you can read about this. I think it's uh, Revelation 13. You know, the mark of the beast. Yeah. So when these, when this man of sin, the Antichrist, sits in the temple of God, look out. That's going to be time to flee to the mountains. Which is going to be hard for me to do in Florida. I think the tallest hill in Florida is 30 feet, but, uh, you know, what can I tell you? Maybe I won't be here. I don't know. All right, let's go back. Revelation 12, verse 6. And the woman, the church, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Oh, this is what the whole this whole Bible study is about. Yesterday we did armies of the Lord, which was the war on earth. Now we're talking about a war in heaven. And there was past tense. There was war in heaven. People say, oh, Revelation's all future. It hasn't happened yet. No, it says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Now, what happens in a war? People try to kill each other. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. The dragon and his angels did not prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. He was booted out. And the Drake, great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, old serpent, take a look at Genesis chapter 3, when you talk about the serpent talking to Eve, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Jesus said, uh, let me see, in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18, Jesus said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Hmm. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. Revelation 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. Woo. Uh, wow. Verse 11. And they, the church, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
and they love not their lives unto the death. Wow. Uh, what does that say for the preacher of rapture people? And they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. How many churchgoers do you know that would give their lives for Christ? We will may find out one day. I don't know. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. He's angry. He's mad. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Cain and Abel, Herod and Christ, right? Verse 14, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times, two more years, and half a time, six months, from the face of the serpent. Ooh. Now, what is the, the seagull wing stuff? I actually did a playlist on this in depth. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19. You see, the Old Testament symbolism carries over to the New Testament in the book of Revelation. So, like I say, if you've never read the Old Testament, all the symbolism in Revelation has no meaning. You don't know what it is. Exodus chapter 19. Uh, let's start in verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out, out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Wilderness of Sinai. Sin AI. You know, the wilderness of sin. That's what they called it. Verse 2. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. You know the plagues of Egypt? Oh yeah. And how I, the Lord, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. And how I bear you on eagles' wings. Figure of speech here. And brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Europe and the America and America are not a holy nation. That is for sure. Far from it. Revelation twelve fourteen, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. Just like in the exodus from Egypt. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What is this flood? Huh, let's go take a look. All right, let's go read Revelation uh, 17. You know, this stuff fits together like a knitted sweater. I mean, it really does. One thread leads to another, that leads to another, leads to another. 
Revelation 17 and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, judgments upon the earth, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Remember what we read about the seven heads and ten horns? And the woman was arrayed in purple. Purple is the color of royalty, people. And scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And of course, they'll tell you, that's Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. I don't think so. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. In the book of Acts, who was killing those that were in Christ? It wasn't the Roman Catholic Church. Sorry. And the angel said unto me, uh, let's see. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that not everybody's name was, there were names that were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? Was your name written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? I pray that God mine was. Something to think about. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Did you know Jerusalem is built on seven hills? I heard Papal Rome is too. I've heard Moscow is too. And Seattle, home of Microsoft. Um, I don't know. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, um, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns, remember we talked about horns? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Remember, they anointed the king of Israel with a horn of oil. But this is the satanic kings. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind. They have a hive mind, people. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The beast is the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. These shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Hmm. And he saith unto me, listen carefully about these waters, people. Verse 15, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, 
are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Let's go back to Revelation 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What is this flood? This flood is not a flood of water. It's a flood of people. Heathen aliens. Isn't all the West flooded with heathen aliens? Europe and America? Absolutely. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Here's future people. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. There's going to be an earthquake that's going to help the church and swallow up the flood of heathen aliens. Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. He was angry. He was PO'd. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you keep the commandments of God? Do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ? What commandments of God? In Matthew chapter 22, verse 35, Then one of them which was a lawyer asked him, Jesus, a question, tempting him. He's trying to trick him up. Tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And this comes right out of the Old Testament people. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Unless, of course, you're a Seventh-day Adventist, then you got to keep the Sabbath. Otherwise, you're not keeping the law. So, do we... Do we... Do we have the testimony of Jesus Christ and keep the commandments of God? The two commandments? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war. War! with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I hope that you found this information useful. I pray that you will share it with friends and family. Um, and all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.